Hey folks, Agent the CEO here, and I've installed a bunch of Unify security cameras before, and I mean, I have them here, I have them at my mom's, and I have them at a bunch of other churches, and Unify used to have a product that, for whatever reason, it has been back-ordered um, for two years, which makes me think that they just don't make it anymore, and it is a viewport, and it just almost looks like a Roku or a Fire Stick that will connect to a TV and make it be a full display over um, your network, PoE, and it would just turn any monitor into like a security camera. Now, they don't have that, and what I've done before is just take a small computer, a laptop or whatever, and just hook it up to the TV so people can see it and just leave it on. Now, sometimes, you know, laptops have gotten kind of cheaper, but I want to leverage one of these micro PCs here, and I want to show you how to turn this on and turn it into one of these screens that you really don't have to touch. But more importantly, I actually have this because it's a smaller footprint, it's way more powerful, and I wanna set it up to where we're gonna turn this and the browser into a kiosk that once this boots up, it automatically goes into the view. So let me just walk you through how we do all of that, and let's go ahead and set the computer up. And this is a Ryzen 5 mini computer that I actually got on Amazon for like $300, which is a deal, because um, it gives way more power than, than what is needed. This system is really slick. It actually has 16 gigs of memory, a Ryzen 5. Um, it has a 512 terabyte SSD inside of here. It has dual HDMI outs and an Ethernet port and four, well, three USB 3.0 ports and then a regular one. We're actually going to hook this up to a wireless keyboard. So if anybody has to control it, it can be done. Um, that way it does have Wi-Fi, but we're going to connect it over Ethernet. Um, Windows 11 was already installed on it, so I didn't need to have to do any license keys or anything like that. So let me hook this up so we can actually see what the system does. All right, so the first thing we're going to do now that we got the system turned on is we're going to log into our Unify console, and we're gonna set up a user account to do this, all right? So let's go ahead and cut over to my Unify. All right, so I'm here on the UDM Pro under the Unify console, and the first thing we're gonna do is add an account. Now, this account is gonna live on our mini PC. It is gonna be a local account with only view access. We don't want anybody to be able to modify or do anything, so it's a viewer only. So. After logging in, if you're not there, you can come in here and go to the Unify OS. That's where I'm at. We're gonna go to admins, and we're gonna come in here and add a user. Our role is gonna be a viewer. It is not gonna be a Ubiquity account. It's gonna be local only. If it was a Ubiquity account, somebody could log in remotely, which we don't want for this. That's what the phone apps for the security team is for. So what's the, us the username? We're gonna say camera, Viewer, you can call it whatever you want. Username is going to be security. Give it a decent password. And boom. So this is now the account that this system is going to log in. Now let's test it. Because um, I'm going through my Unify account, this needs to be local. So we're going to be logging into the Unify Protect directly. So we need to get the IP address. So let's go to about, and the IP address is right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up an incognito window. Let's go ahead and log in here. And this is where it's gonna ask for the credentials that we just did. So that's secure, if I can spell it, security. And log in. All right, so we're here in our viewer status, but we're gonna make this whole link so we can go there straight. So we'll go over here to protect. And you can see me walking around there, which I guess I should have purged some of this stuff. <laughs> but, and then here's my security camera. So you see my messy office, front door, back door, garage. All right, so this is the view and this is the URL we need to be mindful of. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we're gonna set this aside so that I know what that URL is. So that way, this local machine will log directly into the um, Unify Protect, all right? So we got all that. So 
but let's go ahead and close this. All right, and we're good to go. So now let me switch over to the system over here so that y'all can see this whole setup. All right, so we're here on the desktop now, and what we're gonna do is a couple of things. I'm gonna be utilizing um, Chrome's kiosk mode. Windows 11 and Windows 10 has a kiosk mode. I'm not really liking it right now because it's not letting me select the browser. It's only letting me select Edge, which um, Unify doesn't really play nice with. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have Chrome here installed. So the first thing we're going to do, let's open up Chrome. And it's recommended to do it this way. You don't have to, but this is how I'm going to do it. We're going to make a new profile. So let's go to Add. And we are not going to sign into an account. We're going to continue without an account. And we're just going to call this security. Now, you can pick whatever color. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the main thing we want is to make sure it creates a desktop shortcut. All right. So we got that. Boom. All right. So let's go ahead and close this. And close all of this one. And as you can see, it made our link. I don't need this one. That one, don't need edge. So this is the main one. So what we're gonna do is right click on this and we're gonna go to properties. And now what we wanna do is put this in kiosk mode for Chrome. All right, so at the end of the directory here, see it says profile, that's number three, um, cause that's what is correlated to here. I don't know why it does three, but oh well, we got it there. Now what we wanna do is go all the way to the end of this path and we're going to do a two hyphens and kiosk. And then what we're going to use is the URL that we set for the Unify Protect page, right? So we're going to do, what's that? HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.0.1 slash protect slash live view so that it goes to that view and then it gives me the string i don't know if the string actually i'm not going to include the string and we'll just see if this is going to work or not all right so we got that let's go ahead and click apply and okay all right so now if we go ahead and click on this double click on that is and you see it's given this, so we're actually hitting our UDM Pro. And we want to avoid this, so hopefully we can avoid this in the future. Um, and I'll probably have to add the SSL and all that other stuff. But anyway, we're getting to it. <laughs> so let's go here to proceed, and boom, we're here at the login. Let's go ahead and put our password in. And did I spell it wrong? I think I did. There we go. All right, so now, as you see, boom, we went right into this. Now, me personally, I would love to actually do this in full screen, so it's like this, um, but that's a keystroke. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do that, but even though it's not in full screen, it gets me exactly what I need, and it gives me access to the other screens over here if I needed to see anything. So there we go. All right, so we got this, so let's close this. Now that's part of it, really simple. Now, the next thing we need to do is we want this to start up immediately once somebody um, starts the computer or anything. So we always want this to be on. So how do we do that? We're gonna go ahead and hit the Windows key and R, go to the run command, and we're gonna do shell, um, semicolon, I mean, colon, um, startup. And if we do that, it's gonna open our startup folder, the classic startup folder. So what we're gonna do is drag this over to the startup folder. And actually, I wanna make a copy of this instead. And we'll paste that here. So this is what's gonna get kicked off. Now, if there was a way for me to find a way to pass the passwords and the credentials, I would like that. But in theory, I'm hoping that this is not something that's gonna just be shutting off all the time. And actually, just make sure about that. Let's go to the power settings and let's make sure 
this doesn't shut off. All right, it's set to never. So as long as there's no loss of power or anything like that, once we start this, it should just stay on, all right? So let's go ahead and test it. Let's go ahead and restart the system. And I'm really hoping it would keep the credentials in there. Um, but, you know, that's something small. As long as we have the passwords that's readily available for whoever, it would be no different than if you had, like, another security system that you have to log in. Almost all of them are moving to some type of online type of thing. I mean, online, um, like a web-based interface. You just don't have them on. All right, so we're booting right into it. We're here on the screen. Internet connection. Let's give it a second. There it goes. And see, it does get me here. I'd rather it not do that, but again, the intention would be that that's it. So that's it. I'm going to try and figure out a way to pass the credentials. And again, we didn't get that prompt, which was good about the you know, this is foreign and all this other stuff like that. So that's what we what we got. This is what I'm going to be placing at the church inside of the security room. And again, the good thing is this computer is way more powerful than it needs to just run a um, web browser. So if it was ever needed to do anything else, we got enough horsepower behind it, um, a good processor. And with the GPU and everything like that, just running Chrome is not going to be a problem. Let me know if you have any other questions. I do have to modify this because, again, I'm not physically there at the church. All of the credentials are set up the same way for this church. The only thing I really have to do is change the IP address because theirs is set to, um, it's going to be to the new NVR that I have. So that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to change that on site. But this is already set up. So um, link is down below to everything I use for this. I'll also include all of the stuff that I do for the um, NV Auto um, Unify, Ubiquity, Protect stuff. Really like it, been using it for years. And um, good thing about it is it doesn't cost anything monthly. So anyway, if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. Catch you on the next video. Later. <music>